Today, I will be showing you my portable level two electric vehicle charger. This device is designed to fit into the trunk of my Cadillac ELR to allow destination charging where it would normally not be available. This allows extending the range of the vehicle and thus saving on costly and polluting gasoline. The range of the ELR is 35 miles of pure electric driving before switching to gasoline, or roughly the equivalent to one gallon of fuel. My battery stores approximately 7 kilowatt hours of electric energy, which allows the vehicle to achieve more than a 60% charge on the go. Perfect for those trips to my favorite vantage point to spend some time enjoying the sights while the car tops up. The design of this battery is modular to allow the device to be assembled in the trunk of the car. In this video, I will take you through a build log, talk through some of the design decisions, and show you how I put this project together. It all started with an eBay auction earlier this year. I found an Engineer plug-in hybrid conversion kit for an older model Toyota Prius. The idea behind this kit was to supplement the hybrid battery, charging it while driving to trick the car into not running the gasoline engine as often. This helped to boost the overall MPG of the car, with some trips being completed entirely without using any gas at all. The plan was to adapt this system to charge the Cadillac ELR hybrid battery. I had planned to tap into the high voltage bus in the trunk located on the 12 volt DC to DC converter. I did some experiments with this setup on my bench and quickly realized that there is a diode present on this bus, which prevents current from flowing backwards into the main hybrid pack. I was discouraged and decided to shelve the project for a little while. The idea kept nagging me though, to find a way to extend the range of my beloved ELR. I didn't want to do any crazy modifications like removing the hybrid battery, for fear of avoiding any chance of a dealer ever wanting to work on this car again. Fast forward three months and the idea still popped into my mind every once in a while. I decided to think outside of the box and make a trade-off that the car wouldn't be charged while driving. This left only one option, which is to build a portable level two electric vehicle charger. This means to charge the car from 240 volt mains, just like it would be at a public charging stall. Achieving a portable source of 240 volts is not as difficult as you would think. I ordered a four kilowatt inverter from eBay with a hardwired connection on the front to allow me to mate it to a level two electric vehicle charger. With a design in mind, I made a trip to the hardware store and bought some lumber to hold everything together. The batteries weigh 51 pounds each and the other components are fairly light, with the inverter being the next heaviest object at around 15 pounds. The final build weight is supposed to be between 260 and 280 pounds. I opted for two by two rails with one by two spans to hold the various components and a board mounted at a 90 degree angle to hold the wiring, fuses, battery management system and other components. The basic design is to have two parallel rails with spans across. The whole system is held together with threaded rods to allow disassembly and reassembly. I have verified the fit of the rails in the trunk and then began to cut the spans to fit. Here I am doing a basic fitment test of the lumber with the batteries to see how well everything fits together and to test the strength of the spans supporting the heavy components. I needed four spans for the batteries and inverter and then two more to clamp the batteries in place from the top. I used a Dremel tool to cut the threaded rod down to length. I drilled holes to bolt the frame together and added a bore for the nuts to recess into the bottom of the rails. This allows it to rest evenly on the floor. After preparing the lumber and threaded rod, I assembled the frame to verify fit. At this point, the assembly is coming together quite well and strength is not an issue. I was able to stand on this frame with the batteries mounted and found no issue with flexing. Here I am clamping the batteries into the frame from the top. This prevents them from sliding backwards or forwards and locks the assembly together to provide additional rigidity. Next, I applied a quick and cheap paint job with some combination paint primer. The goal was just to conceal any imperfections in the wood and help it to blend in with the interior of the trunk, not to provide a nice furnished look. I was able to paint all of the frame members in just a few hours. I really did not want to spend very much time on this. With the frame coming together, it was time to start thinking about the electrical components, the most important of which is the inverter. Here is the four kilowatt inverter that I ordered from eBay. The cost was less than 500 US dollars. The car can charge at a peak power of 3.3 kilowatts, which makes this a perfect choice. I checked some reviews here on YouTube and found that it was well received, so I went ahead with the order. I mounted the inverter on two additional frame spans, leaving space for the 240 volt wiring on the right hand side. This is another modular component that can be removed from the rails. I created a small DC cable with an Anderson SB 175 amp connector and two 3 8 inch ring terminals. 
This will connect the inverter to the rest of the system. The inverter output is then wired to a NEMA 1450 surface mount connector. This was fairly straightforward except for one caveat. This is a single phase inverter, which means that it is not possible to obtain 120 volts from it. The neutral pin in the NEMA 1450 is left disconnected. This is not to any code or standard, but the J1772 connector commonly found on American electric vehicles only has a line and a neutral pin, which are derived from the two outer hot pins in the NEMA 1450, leaving the neutral unused. With the inverter module completed, I reassembled the painted frame and began work on the low voltage wiring, starting with the 48 volt bus bars and heavy duty shunt. The shunt is used by the battery management system to measure current flowing through the battery pack. This allows it to estimate the state of charge and implement overcurrent, over discharge, and overcharge safety features through a set of relays that will be wired as well. The battery modules are wired in an 8S configuration, which means 8 cells in series. I will be putting four modules in a 2S 2P configuration, which means two series strings in parallel with each other. After some initial wiring, I was able to see 55 volts on my multimeter, which is the fully charged voltage of this pack. Next, I mounted the BMS. I decided on an Orion Junior BMS. These can handle 16 cells and implement a wide array of safety features. It ended up being a great platform to learn from. I started work on the wiring harness for the BMS. This connects each individual cell to the system for monitoring and balancing. The shunt and safety relays are also wired. The Orion Junior has two connectors, one for cell balancing and another for input-output signals as well as power. The wiring harness is connected into the system and the rest of the components are wired. This includes a 250 amp system fuse, temperature probes, a load relay and a charger relay. I decided to use the multi-purpose input on the BMS to serve as an on-off switch for the system. I had a large circuit breaker that would serve that purpose while providing a nice tactile switch. After hours of wiring, the build was finally complete. Here is the finished product before it was transferred into the trunk of the car. Moving it into the car was fairly easy. The hardest part was handling the 50 pound batteries onto the frame, but the whole effort took less than an hour. It uses almost the entire trunk, so clearly the practicality of this is limited. Performance so far has been looking great. The inverter is easily able to support the full load of the car at 3.3 kilowatts, though the batteries do warm up after an hour at this rate. This is to be expected and the BMS can monitor the system and cut the load if the temperature gets too high. I can also configure the Open EVSC L2 charger to cap the 240 volt current at 10 amps. The main crux so far is that I am using a 600 watt e-bike charger to recharge this pack. A full charge at this rate will take over 16 hours. This is not a huge inconvenience for me and could easily be improved upon with a larger charger. One interesting note is that this could be used as a portable power wall of sorts, shifting some loads from peak electric rates to off-peak, which saves money and reduces reliance on dirty sources of power. These lithium iron phosphate batteries are very resilient to high cycle counts and would be well suited to this application. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I put a lot of effort into this project and while the utility kind of seems limited, um, I learned a lot from it and that's actually the reason why I do these kinds of projects because I, I really value the lessons that I learn. And um, yeah, there's lots more left to do with this. I'm gonna have to play around with the BMS some more. There's more tuning to do there. Um, probably gonna give that Powerwall application that I mentioned earlier a whirl and see what I can do with that. So yeah, if you enjoyed the video though, I would really appreciate it if you could click the like button down below. And um, you know, if you like this kind of subject, uh, feel free to subscribe. I have a full-time job, so I, I don't post videos very often. I promise not to spam your feed, but if I'm making a video, it's usually about something that I really care about. And so maybe it's worth watching if you like this video. So yeah, anyway, thank you for watching and hopefully I will see you next time.